I mean, could you take out a city? Fly next to the swarm and shoot a bunch of times, then go back and land again. Palmer before had started uh, Oculus, was the VR company, and he very famously got kicked out of Facebook for being a Republican. That's a longer conversation. He's basically America's Iron Man. He's like, he's a hilarious inventor guy. And so one of their new products, which is amazing, uh, it, it reminds me of Elon's rockets. It could, it's a missile that can open up, launch, and if it's not used, it comes back and lands and waits and gets used again, which is not something that I think the generals knew to ask for. But if you think about warfare, it's all about like... How did that even pop up on your radar? What, what was going through your head when it started? With that press when it got started? Yeah. So the thing, the thing was, the thing we were talking about earlier is basically we realized that China was going to be an adversary, that this like crazy guy is actually communist who's coming in, that he's forcing his best and brightest to work on new ways to get us. And we said, okay, what does the war look like in the 21st century? Like, what, what is the warfare going to happen? Going to have happen? And you're going to have like these massive numbers of drones is by far the best way to fight. And you're going to need ways to stop them. And so, 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 what is it? Where the most important weapons? Well, if you could have force fields, if you have the Star Trek shields, that's pretty freaking cool. And let's let's. And it turns out, the, in venture capital, there's two things, right? In venture capital, there's there's where's the best talent in the world, and what's possible now that wasn't possible before. We have access to the best talent. We're lucky to have that. So, what's newly possible? Well, it turns out these chips are now fast enough to control power on small time scales to make our electronic warfare weapons work way better. So he said, okay, this is a really key area because we know there's new possibility here. Let's prove it out. And it was really fun because with about $30, $40 million on our side, we were able to go to the desert and have a competition against guys who've raised and spent and given, given billions and billions by the government, tens of billions by the government for their stuff. And, and when the hardened drones flew, for the same size, same power, we shot down the hardened drones nine and a half times farther away. Are you serious? Nine and a half times farther away than the guys who got billions of dollars of contracts. And it's because there's these new possibilities that they didn't know how to do. How was it? How was it developed? Where'd you guys develop this? El, El Segundo, Nathan Mintz, Bo Mar, a bunch of guys, Andy Lowry, a bunch of really key guys on their team. Who, you know, and the DNA was a combination. Like we had the DNA from the Silicon Valley world, and we had the DNA from the electronic warfare world. So there's some people who have worked at some of these other places because you, there's just certain expertise that's been built up in America that no one else has that you need to build on what already exists and build on the kind of knowledge of how gallium nitride can be worked with, as well as what's nearly possible. Is Leonidas an offensive weapon as well as a defensive weapon? There's lots of ways. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's core. It's really it's a defensive thing in a sense that like you can have something protecting a city or a base or a squadron. But I mean, if you're going to be attacking the bad guys and you're going forward, you want to have these things, right? You want to have ways of stopping the drone and other attacks from getting you during an offensive. So, or you base, by the way, you want to just turn off the area you're attacking. Imagine if there's an area you're going after and all the electronics go dead. That's probably pretty useful right before an attack. So what would you what would you point the the weapon at if you wanted to take out a? I mean, could you take out a city? What what do you mean by that? Like turn off the power and yeah. if you turn off the power in a cone that goes again. We're not supposed to say how far, but but quite a far far distance. And so you could definitely turn off an area of a town or a city, and you could move it to turn off more. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah. It's pretty crazy, right? It is. We used to think of, we used to think about this in terms of when I was a kid. You thought about like. Like the EMP from a nuke going off in the high atmosphere, so that'd be like it's a but you know that's actually a much more aggressive and scary version of these things. But but this thing definitely be used once. This thing could keep being used without hurting anyone at all. Could this could this take out a nuke mid flight? It could. So it, so it's frying electronics. So if you think about it for satellite defense, for example. Uh, which is not what we're doing right now, but it's just, it's just me talking out of my butt, so excuse me if, it's, if I get something wrong. But, but my bias would be that if something's targeting a satellite, it needs to be adjusting its flight in order to hit it. And so you probably, what you'd want to do with a satellite is you'd want to blast this, and you'd blast it a certain number of miles away. And then you could just adjust slightly, and the thing's not going to know how to hit you. Same thing, a cargo plane's a better example, probably, right? So I think if you got a big, slow cargo plane and a bad guy's trying to take it out, which is key for contested logistics, you can put one of these on it, you know, you always see the movie where the missile's trying to follow the guy. You blast the missile, now it's a dumb missile, and then you turn. Right. So there's things like that we're probably gonna be doing for defending planes and wow. things like that. So this so these these might be deployed on planes. I think I think I think some version of these will definitely be deployed on planes at some point if we're gonna be having battles. Now the question is what type of planes and drones we, we have or use in ten years, but but yeah, you definitely want I mean, you definitely want cargo planes no matter what, I think. So you definitely what, use them. What other what other type of uh what other type of stuff are these things going to be deployed on? Naval ships, I would Boat assume. Boat ships are, I mean, our company, Saronic, which is building the 
you know, hopefully thousands and thousands of these uh, smart autonomized kind of like so smart autonomous weaponized vessels. You're going to want that could be one of the things you put on an autonomous vessel. Obviously, during a battle, is to be able to go around and turn things off with this. So I think I think you're going to have stuff like that too. Are there different sizes now? Hundred percent. So the ones that are the ones that are Leonidas is a certain size, which which is you know takes out a certain distance, is much farther. If you wanted, to, for example, if for example this was put in an Android Roadrunner, if we did that kind of partnership, like that would like there's only a small cone inside the Roadrunner. So there's only a certain amount of, of stuff you could put in there that might only shoot things effectively like twenty or thirty meters, for example. Uh, but that might be okay because the Roadrunner could fly up, fly next to the swarm, and shoot a bunch of times. Then go back and land again. I love that video that Palmer made with, with the guys on that. It's such a cool, such a cool weapon. So that combining it with stuff like that would be great. Man, can you can you go into the Roadrunner a little bit? Another so so I'm, I'm I'm lucky to be an early investor in Andrel. Uh, Brian Schimpf, Trey Stevens, Matt Grimm, a bunch of our superstars from Palantir co-founded this with my friend Palmer. Palmer before had started uh, Oculus, was the VR company, and I actually backed him at the beginning of that. He was like, he's a, he's a Crazy kid, like 20, 21 years old. We met him and he had this prototype, and we're like, oh, this is too crazy. Let's give him a little bit of money, though. It's so impressive. And then we actually co led the next round because we're starting to work, and then Facebook bought it. And he very famously got kicked out of Facebook for being a Republican. That's a longer conversation. What? You know about this? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, no, he like put up a billboard against Hillary and was like outspoken. I mean, listen, you're all of a sudden a billionaire in your mid 20s and you have opinions, and it's right in the middle of woke Silicon Valley. So they then this Facebook's like famously like on the other side of it. So they just attacked him like crazy and and you know, all these people were really nasty to him. A lot of people have come out from Facebook and apologized to him now because he's now like this really important leader in our country doing great things and they realize they were wrong to treat him that way. So it's like a it's like a whole saga in his life of being like beaten down and out and discarded. Not bad that he's a billion billionaire, you know. I, just because we're talking about Palmer, I was at his wedding. He's not gonna like this, maybe. I was at his wedding, and I was sitting next to like you know Peter Thiel and Senator Cruz and all these people, and it's a beautiful, beautiful wedding. He's a very wealthy guy. He's when he's getting married, and all of a sudden, all the music goes off, and a Top Gun music comes on, and then like a helicopter flies over us. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it lands behind the behind, and, he, and Palmer's flying it. He comes out in in tails, and he never dresses up nicely for the wedding. The helicopter goes away, and then the normal music comes back on. His wife comes in normally with her dad. But that's the kind of guy. He's just he's hilarious. Damn, that's he's, awesome. He's basically America's Iron Man. He's like he's a hilarious inventor guy, amazing guy. So he invented all this hardware for for the first real VR in America that worked. And then, and then he partners with my Palantir guys, and they start Andrel. And they and they, and so Andrel has all these crazy cool products, and they're running circles around the primes. They're basically like the next new prime, right? They just raised like billions of dollars at like you know fifteen twenty billion dollar valuation range. And so one of their new products, which is amazing. Yeah, it, it, it reminds me of Elon's rockets. It could, it's a missile that can open up, launch, and if it's not used, it comes back and lands and waits and gets used again, which is not something that I think the generals knew to ask for. But if you think about warfare, it's all about like dollars per effectiveness. Like if you have a bunch of things attacking you, fire 50 of these things, use 10 or 20 if you need, and have the other ones come back and use them again. It's way better, right? And, so, and by the way, this thing is like a tiny fraction of the cost of similar competitive missiles. Are you kidding? It's like, like he's, it's like, it's like he's literally competing against stuff that costs like you know, depending on what it is, one to three million. I think we're selling them for two hundred fifty k now and still have much better margins than our other guys. And uh, so it's just like, which is why you want to let people not do cost plus because you want to have them re-engineer from scratch. You know what makes the most sense? Wow. Because you charge someone cost plus, your job is to make it as expensive as possible because you get to keep a piece of that cost, right? But if you don't charge cost plus, then you have this whole better framework. You know, you get, you had kind of mentioned that uh, you know Lockheed, Raytheon, Boeing, like these companies, the big guys. You guys are you know underneath them. I mean, do you see that flipping? Yeah, I mean, there's still some really, really amazing expertise in our military industrial base. That's like America's the military industrial base that's important and that exists inside some of these primes. So I won't. I, I wouldn't want to say there's like they're not going away, I and mean, mm-hmm. we don't want them to go away. That's actually as much as the military industrial complex, like you talked about, is an issue. You have some stuff we need to know how to do to keep America safe and to be the best in the world. And so these companies are going to be important, but in terms of anything really new and innovative, anything with really hard software, they just don't have the cultures they used to have, and they don't have the top people they used to have for most things. So, so, so it's really important that we have. You know, Silicon Valley just got so far ahead, and it's really important we take some of that culture and apply it. And you know, when, when I first wrote the check into Andrel, it was 2016, I think, I had a bunch of people. Who we work with in like the bio world say we're not going to work with you anymore if you're doing defense. This is so wrong. Like you're just it's just evil. Why would you do this stuff? Like we, it's just wrong to do. And a lot of fun just wouldn't even mean it. Like, you know, so it was like a thing you weren't supposed to do. 
And, and what's really cool is that with the vibe shift, that's totally changed. You have a lot of the best people going in. It's popular now, which maybe it's too popular now, but that's, that's another problem. You know, you know you've mentioned, uh, you had mentioned Facebook kicking them out because of, uh, yeah. of a billboard. What do you think about uh, Zuckerberg trying to get in with the conservative crowd? <laughs> it's pretty interesting to watch the, you know, I mean, well, four years ago, you kicked the president off your platform. Now you want to buddy up? Yeah. It's, I mean, what's, it's, what's going on here? Do you there's, think? A, there's a lot of that going on. Like, listen, Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg is an interesting case. He is fundamentally himself not super political. And he himself, and I'll get a lot of flack for this, but he himself like, has always had an appreciation for some of the liberty side and some of the conservative side, which is shocking given how his company does things. But like, I've sat next to him not that long ago you know, at a wedding or whatever, and he's, like, you know, he's, he's, he's interested in his, his kids learning about some some of these ideas like there's a like the Tuttle Twins or whatever you know there's like these conservative you know, libertarian shows and stuff I think he, he I think he's open to different sides I think the culture inside of Facebook that comes from the universities is so poisonous and so leftist that I think they get away with things sometimes that they don't even tell him about so I'm not saying I'm not saying he's like a perfect good guy on this I think he should be way bolder and hold his company accountable to stop censoring conservatives and stop doing the wrong things so I think he's maybe a little bit soft maybe I would say a little bit cowardly sometimes about these things despite being amazing in other areas but he himself is not really a driver of that and you know what happens is a lot of these guys maybe I'd say he started off moderate moderate left but with an appreciation for both sides and he'll start like a foundation it's called the Chan Zuckerberg initiative CZI and what'll happen with these moderate leftists is they don't they're not good at keeping out like the crazy far left. And so his philanthropy org becomes run by these activists. Okay. And, and he's busy with his business. And, and like they his wife and him, I guess, don't want fights or whatever. So you get these crazy activists and they just start doing terrible stuff. And they're very good at like sounding maybe to him like, oh, it's a reasonable thing. It's not actually affecting things. But when you saw it, it actually changed the 2020 election, mm -hmm. the way they put the hundreds of millions of dollars to work. My my guess is he didn't even understand or might not even still understand how much how much they would screw things up. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.